I'm here with the State Museum's archaeologist, Michelle Greenan. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Well, what do you think about this collection? Yeah, this is really impressive. Um, this is one of the funnest parts of my job, is to be able to look at collections like this for um, folks that have been walking in their fields their whole lives and have amassed these really cool collections. So this is an exciting bit for me. Well, th this came from a, a field out in Avon, Indiana, and a wow. family has farmed that field for generations and generations. But mm. the grandfather and the great uncle had an affinity for walking in the field looking for these. And so quite a collection and yeah. all from one spot. Uh, mm -hmm. There are farmers. Are there things here that have to do with farming or food gathering or? Mm, not so much. Um, you've got one really good piece that's that's really hinting towards um, towards food, food production, food gathering, and that kind of thing. And that's actually your ceramic piece over oh, here. Okay. So I understand that an artifact is something that someone has manufactured or made or changed. Yes, it's and, modified by okay. humans. Mm -hmm. And so this was clay at one time, and, mm -hmm. and it's got some decorations on it. And, mm -hmm. and so this could have held what? Food. That could have been oh. done for cooking. It could have been done for storage. Um, all the above. Unfortunately, it's too small to get a mm -hmm. true idea of its function, you typically need the top or the bottom or a bigger part of the mm -hmm. vessel to figure that out. Um, but one of those two things was going on. Mm -hmm. We do know that. So that definitely has to do with food production. And so most of these stone artifacts are, mm -hmm. are um, made from different types of materials were for food production, but more of a hunting and gathering, you'd say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a huge variety of, of tools that we have here, I think, that we could really focus on. A lot of times people bring in um, arrowheads and they say mm -hmm. I have a whole box of arrowheads. Yeah. Um, the bow and arrow comes into the Midwest um, not until about 700 AD or so give or take. Wow. And Native Americans have been in Indiana in the Midwest since at least 10,000 BC so we're <laughs> talking 12,000 or so years, years of history. Uh -huh. So the bow and arrow is really recent. So would most of these fit on an air, on a shaft? They would have fit on the shaft of a spear or maybe a knife handle mm -hmm. or something else like that. Uh, maybe even used as, as a scraper in some cases, but not they would not have fit on the shaft of a um, of an arrow, of an arrow right? Like a of a typical arrow, bow think, and yeah. arrow. So you mentioned uh, twelve thousand years. Do, do yeah. you see uh, uh, over time some very old ones and some newer ones? Is that what you're saying? I do. Wow. And what's fun about this is often some of the less immediately cool looking things mm -hmm. are the oldest or the most intriguing for some mm. reason or another. So out of all of these points, yep, yep. this one came up really fast, is probably the oldest one in the collection. Really? <laughs> and it doesn't have a lot of bells and, and whistles too much because it's been reworked, mm -hmm. meaning um, they used it and used it and, and it got mm -hmm. smaller and smaller mm -hmm. and smaller as they used it. And this is called a Dalton, I think. It's a Dalton point. It's from the late Paleo-Indian, or the Paleo-Indian period. Um, so that's going to bring us back to some, something in the, in the realm of 9,000 BC, 8,000 wow. BC, 9,000 years ago, something like that. So this, this particular artifact is mm -hmm. that old and is that old and it could have been used to what were the types of animals that were available at this time back then so um, elk deer by that time um, mm -hmm. most of the big megafauna mm -hmm. mastodonts and things like that had uh, were extinct by about this time so you're talking about uh, deer was mm -hmm. has pretty much always been popular and that's still the, still the case now and it's it certainly was then but deer elk um, things like that were, were yeah. really important it, when I when an archaeologist speaks they use evidence so you say deer is always, always been oh, there. how yeah. do you know deer have always been there? well um, evidence digging them up so digging you find them up. them up you find um, bones in association mm -hmm. and some sites bones preserve really well so we can figure out um, in some places um, what they were hunting and mm -hmm. deer deer comes up again and again. In fact, uh, I, 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 I couldn't help but seeing this. This is made out of bone and mm -hmm. maybe that's a deer bone. It, it could be. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Say, <laughs> but it's a beautiful flute. So, it is. You know, uh, so I would have thought that just looking at these, like, these are so cool. Is, would this be a projectile point? But it's kind of weird. You tell us the, like the 101 of a projectile point. What, what do you look for here? So this is it's big, mm -hmm. right? You can see from the scope of your hand, this is kind of a big thing. And it was probably even bigger. It probably wow. had some, some, some size to it. Mm -hmm. And it has a really interesting kind of little feature here in that it's 
um, it's beveled. It has this nice beveling shape. So as it's being used and worked down, mm -hmm. you use it and then you resharpen, flip it, resharpen. So you end up with this really cool um, beveled look to it. Mm -hmm. So when you get it like this, you see that it's kind of thick and beveling, um, but it must have been pretty big. That's too big to fit on an arrowhead shaft mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. shaft of anything uh, to projectile. That's why this makes a really good knife. Yeah, this is you, a classic. And you say that this is flint, and mm -hmm. so uh, flint will break or uh, mm -hmm. will flake. Mm -hmm. And so uh, is this from Indiana then, uh, you think? Or? I believe so, I mm -hmm. believe so. Mm -hmm. And so these are, can you tell by the style then, of when you see something with notches or points, mm -hmm. does that tell you it's a certain type of point? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So throughout the history of, of archaeology in Indiana and in the Midwest mm -hmm. um, in general, um, we've been able to correlate these stylistic changes through time. And so now what we have are these kind of reference books or mm -hmm. references that tell us when you see this this particular form or kind or, or um, uh, style, then it's this kind of point. So gotcha. we have those now throughout our history in archaeology. That's interesting. Kind, mm -hmm. of, kind of like we have cars, different models. So you look at a, a Ford Absolutely. from the 50s, it's more rounded than a Absolutely. Ford. Absolutely. So uh -huh. that, that took a lot yeah. of work. Now, so uh, so these do look like arrowheads. Are these arrow actually? Would these be arrowheads? They are. Uh -huh. So, and that goes to an interesting another point too. With a lot of the stylistic changes, are because the technology is changing. Native Americans are very sophisticated hunters, very mm -hmm. sophisticated, and so their technology changed. Their point styles changed, so they could do things better. And so, when the bow and arrow comes into play, you don't need a big chunky point like this. You mm -hmm. need something sleek and um, and triangle, triangle shaped, triangular mm -hmm. shaped with this nice thin, um, yeah, nice thin cross section. So mm -hmm. this would have fit really nicely into the shaft of uh, a true uh, arrow. Of a true arrow. Yeah. So if someone was throwing a, a, a a, a pointed stone, what did they throw? Did they, they didn't use bow and arrows. How did they get that spear down range? Ah, the addle addle. <laughs> what was that? It's addle addle. Addle addle? Addle addle. <laughs> what is an addle addle? <laughs> it's a spear thrower. Uh -huh. So, spear throwers were very effective. In fact, before the bow and arrow, it was the weapon of choice. We're not really sure when the addle addle came into to being, but we see um, evidence of atlatl use pretty early on, mm -hmm. um, especially when we start seeing things like this. This is amazing. Yeah. I mean, this is this mm -hmm. is weird and beautiful all at once. And look at that hole. There's a hole drilled in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I drill at home. I go to the hardware store and buy a drill bit. But right. this was this is old, right? It, it's very old. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so, how does this uh, reference to an atl atl? Well, interestingly enough, in archaeology, they've been found in association with other parts of atl atl. So it uh, allows us to put this piece mm -hmm. together on mm -hmm. what these things are. So. This is called a banner stone, and a banner stone comes in all different kinds of shapes and sizes, but the general gist is the same. Um, you have kind of a, a heavier implement that fits onto the end of, of uh, the atlatl -atl or the spear throwing device, mm -hmm. and it adds speed and velocity. It's basic physics. Mm -hmm. So if you have a spear thrower and you add a weight to it, um, you increase the mass, it increases, increase the force. Mm -hmm, <laughs> increases the force. And some of these are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. The example here um, is broken, mm -hmm. um, and it's got some things going on maybe it's not quite done yet um, but it's still a great example wow. um, some of these are, are absolutely beautiful is there any of these tools that could make this hole uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> so grinding out holes and things takes a yeah. little bit of, so you want to look and you kind of want to see how it's going. A couple couple ways of grinding holes. Um, the first is you take a uh, uh, sand, and uh -huh. then you take a reed and you spin, and mm -hmm. that alone can make a really good hole, mm -hmm. right? And it can, and, and it does fairly well with sand. So a lot of shaping, and and uh, grinding is actually done using it's sand. The sand. power yeah. of sand, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's that's my mm -hmm. best guess. They also had other tools, um, rolls where you could different things with um, with chert, like a perforator or something. A perforator. Uh huh. Something hole. like this okay. could perhaps be used. So there yeah. are a couple of different ways, but sand is my best friend for, for something for, nice like and that. with mm -hmm. a softer material. Sand's a pretty good friend well, there. This could be used to put a hole through leather. Yeah, or absolutely, or, or, or starter, or, or the starter hole. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And uh, so we, we looked at uh, some knives, and, and some of these things are just, just beautiful. I mean, mm -hmm. look at this. I mean, what, what can you tell us about this? In looking at it immediately, um, it's probably used during the early to middle woodland period. So it's mm -hmm. got this nice stem on it. Mm -hmm. This part here is broken, but it's a stemmed point. So we call that like a, a middle, uh, early to middle woodland mm -hmm. stemmed form. So this is nice for uh, the end of a, of a spear, mm -hmm. nice spear. You know, the, um, these, this is such a collection, there's so much to learn about this. Where could someone go to, to learn more about this? Well, right here at the Indiana State Museum. Online, there's some great references too, so mm -hmm. I think online is a, is a great starting point. Tell us a little bit about when we switch from hunting gathering here in Indiana to more of a sustained agricultural lifestyle. <sighs> um, so interestingly, people think of corn immediately. They, mm -hmm. you know, they think of Native Americans and, and corn, which is very, very true. Um, but in the Midwest, they developed agriculture or growing their own food for much longer than corn. Kind of like the spear and atlatl versus the um, the arrow. You know, mm -hmm. um, corn is pretty recent. In before corn. Native Americans had learned how to grow their own food, grow their own crops, such as kinopodium and sunflower and even some kinds of gourds. So these things were already being grown very successfully in the Midwest for mm -hmm. you know, thousands of years. Um, so we have the first evidence of this about 3000 BC that they're starting to control the growth of certain mm -hmm. um, native species. So by the time you hit this middle woodland period here, this point right here, mm -hmm. so they're really starting to grow their own food. Kinopodium, if you go to the store and get quinoa, that's very similar, it would be very similar to that. So corn comes into the picture um, little bits at a time, um, 600 AD, 700 AD, mm -hmm. its, use, its use starts to increase and increase. Um, but before that, it was all about kinopodium and, and mm. sunflower. And, um, and during the Archaic period, even early on, they were heavily utilizing nuts and, and natural resources um, like that. So and, and the nuts and natural resources would be more of a hunting and gathering? More of a, more of a gathering type yeah. scenario. So mm -hmm. farming, you could almost say farming started uh, with a kinopodium? <laughs> I would say so. Well, farming, sometimes in archaeology, we use farming to mean um, like large scale, large scale. Mm -hmm. So we say large scale agriculture comes with corn about the Mississippian period just bef before um, or just prior to the Mississippian period somewhere in the 1000 AD 1100 okay. AD period mm -hmm. um, smaller scale horticultural farming was done um, before that it was really popular so mm -hmm. I would say I would say yeah yeah so there's a possibility that on the on the Turner farm mm -hmm. something has been growing there for about 3,000 years Could be. corn corn that's pretty amazing mm -hmm. now um, I got kind of excited when they showed me this. I was thinking that this has got to be for grinding corn. Am I right? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm not right. <laughs> uh, no, mm. well, wait a minute. This, <laughs> this, looks, this looks like it uh, fits my hand perfectly hand. and smooth. I would grind corn with this. Why, why are you yeah. saying no? Well, there's a couple of bells and whistles going okay. on in my head. Yeah. So um, first off, when yeah. I look at a piece like this, um, I think to myself, was that made, the, our definition of artifact, was it modified by man? So mm -hmm. I look mm -hmm. immediately for evidence of modification. And mm -hmm. I, I don't see that so much here. I see nature. I see nature played an evil trick on us. <laughs> and, um, but this is called, um, we call this a, a geofact or an ecofact. Geo meaning earth, earth made. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep made a trick on us. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> if I go home and polish it, then it'll become an artifact. <laughs> then it would become an artifact, yes. So, but but I, uh, I learned that Native Americans did grind some grain, so yeah. uh, if they didn't use this, what did they use? Well, they had something very similar to mm -hmm. that. So if we have some great examples right over here. Okay. These this are, is from the State Museum? This is from the State Museum's mm -hmm. collection. This is an example. Both of these are, are great examples of pestles. And that wants to be a pestle. Mm -hmm. That's a nature-made pestle. Okay. These are real pestles. These, you can see, they're really smooth. The material is, is not unsimilar. It's very hard stone. Mm -hmm. um, but these are very smooth. These are uh, obviously p if you're putting them close together. There's a big difference. Sure. So one of the things I, I like to tell people when they come in, and I have to disappoint them and say, mm -hmm. "Oh no, it's an eco fact," is that um, it's a really easy mistake to make because sure. nature can play some great tricks on us. But when um, 
The rule of thumb that I, I tend to use is that when Native Americans made something to make it, they made it. And so you can see it's like the difference mm -hmm, between mm -hmm. this and this. This mm -hmm. is smooth. It's smoothed down. It has, you have a nice groove in the, in the oh, bottom for is, grinding. There yeah. Is actually, so, and oh, I can feel the difference. Mm -hmm. This is s very smooth compared mm -hmm. to out here. Yep. And I see a little, looks like a little chipping maybe mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And this fits in my hand quite well. This side of my hand would be probably sore yeah, after a couple probably. hours. Yeah, probably. But that, so. the surface of that is really, really rough. Mm -hmm. And the surface of this, how, did, how does the surface of that feel and look compared yeah. to that? Uh, quite smooth and fits mm -hmm. my hand. So mm -hmm. artifact, not, not geofact. Artifact, geofact. Geo, we'll call that a lever right. Lever right out of here. In the yeah. <laughs> so this would. You can't tell this was for corn grinding? Or? Pro probably not. What archaeology knows is that these start coming um, about and start getting really popular in the archaeological record by about 6,000 BC or so. So oh, okay. um, as the environment changes from that paleo environment, uh, cooler climates longer, mm -hmm. um, and it starts to change into what our environment is now, we have a kind of changing of our ecological niches. Lo what that means is a lot more nuts, a lot more vegetation, mm -hmm. lots more niches that Native Americans could really utilize. So we see artifacts like this, which reflect a really heightened use of plant material, including nuts. Mm -hmm. So these are probably more like for grinding um, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> or making nut meal. <laughs> or making nut meal, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. These pestles. Well, Absolutely. You know, there's so much to learn. I mean, a person could spend uh, months, if not years, just on this collection learning about mm -hmm. it. But I got one more thing uh, I'd like to show you. I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty sure that this was used for digging in the dirt, like a hoe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Striking out no. again. No. So, um, what, what would this have been used for, do you think? So, interestingly enough, that is similar to this mm -hmm. in the respect that we start to see these really kind of explode in the archaeological record because you, you've got trees and think people are staying places longer. So that was probably used for woodworking. For that is probably tree? associated with or mm -hmm. built making houses, building mm -hmm. um, uh, canoes, things like that. Right. So probably uh, woodworking of some kind. So, so this is called a what you kelt. Call it? A kelt. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a pestle, mm -hmm. banner stone, uh -huh. pottery shard, arrowhead, pottery shard. knife, shard, shard. pottery shard, mm -hmm. okay. A, you're not gonna call it a drill. I'm gonna, I like a general perforator, because that way a it can be perforator. an all-purpose an all purpose <laughs> okay. thing, just in case. Yeah. Well, I was kind of disappointed because I know corn's important in Indiana, and I was hoping this was mm -hmm. a hoe. That is not a hoe. Yeah. This is a hoe. Whoa. That is a hoe. <laughs> yep, so May the I? technology was really sophisticated, so when they wow. made something for something, they really uh -huh. did it. That is a classic hoe found in south, uh, south, southern Indiana, southwestern Indiana. And what, what's cool about that is um, it's made of chert. It's made chert. of the same mm -hmm. material that we have over here. But if you see on the end. Yeah, it looks polished. It absolutely is. It was Did heavily you guys used. It? No. Oh, so it's polished through use. Through use. It's so, a nice patina. Uh, okay, so this was actually for digging, and what co what crops were associated with this? Corn. Corn. That is associated wow. with heavy corn and heavier agriculture. And so this was discovered in a site that, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and now it's part of the state collection. It is. Yeah, that is, and so this would be direct evidence. Yep. That corn. <laughs> yeah. It's been around and for a long that time. Corn was very important, absolutely. Very important. Well, there's definitely a reason why we're Indiana or land of the Indians. <laughs>